I'm Camille Couturier. I'm currently doing my PhD in LP Energy uh, Paris. So I'm going to talk about, um, well, leaf tests for performed with AGNs uh, using with um, Trenkov telescopes. So here is the plan of my talk. First of all, well, uh, what motivates what motivates us to uh, look for Lorentz invariance violation? Um, well, the, this morning's speakers have been well had very inspiring um, reason like uh, uh, Giovanni and Maxim. I pick only two. Uh, leave effects at Planck scale uh, could be like one of the only probe of quantum gravity effects we have, and also. It's a strong assumption of the special relativity theory, and that has to be tested anyway. So, Lorentz invariance violation. So, what are we looking at? We are looking for um, a dependence on the energy of the speed of light. So, this dependence could be linear or quadratic. Um, that means if so, um, on large scales, the effects could add up, and we could like observable effects. Um, that means if uh, two photons are emitted from a source at the same time, we will measure them at different moments. Um, so here uh, is a formula we use, uh, um, like a relation between um, the difference uh, of time arrival of two photons and the difference of their energies. Um, so this well, depends on the well, Planck scale, energy, uh, the Planck mass, the Hubble constant, and this term that increases with redshift. To well, look for those effects, we are currently using, uh, among others, Chernenkov telescopes because those have um, like a rather large level arm, uh, energy level arm. So what is a Chernenkov telescope? Basically, it's an optical telescope with a large collecting, a large collecting area. Um, well, when a cosmic particle enters the atmosphere, it will trigger an air shower, and there will be an emission of like a blue or near UV light into a light cone. The we can get a projection, an image of the projection of this light cone into the camera of, uh, of the telescope. And by analyzing uh, this image, we will be able to, well, deduce uh, the kind of incoming particle, its direction and its energy. One of the biggest challenge is, well, to sort the photons among all the particles we got, like electrons or hadrons. One, um, very interesting class of sources uh, we can look at with those instruments are active galactic nuclei. So that's, those are uh, extragalactic sources. We can take them as, well, uh, compact sources um, in a mid at the center of uh, an active galaxy that will emit uh, more luminosity than other objects. And, well, they present two jets. The most of the AGNs we measure are actually blazars. That means the, um, one of the jets is uh, directed toward us, toward the Earth. They show a high variability over the whole electromagnetic spectrum. Um, they show two peaks in the energy spectrum, one of them in the, in the gamma ray range. And um, the redshift we have measured with, our, I mean, with the Chernkov telescopes are well, from those values. So I picked um, the two most interesting AGNs we have so far for deriving uh, limits on leave effects. One of them is PKS 2155. Uh, it's located at redshift 0 0.1. In 2006, Hess has observed a flare of this object um, with like energies of photons from 120 uh, GVs to 4 TV. And they have collected more than 10,000 photons. So here is the time distribution of the flare. Well, we call it light curve. 
And uh, three analyses um, has been used to derive uh, limits on well, leaf effects. One of them uh, uses wavelet transforms. Well, properly speaking, it's not a method to derive um, to derive time lag, but uh, like discrete wavelet transform can help us to smooth to clean the light curve, and then continuous uh, wavelet transforms will be used to locate um, the peaks in, let's say, in two energy bands. And once we locate the peaks in the light curve, we can get um, delta T. We know the delta E of energy we, we got, and thus we can derive a limit on QG scale. So that's the, the limit you, um, derived with this method. Another method is, well, uh, cross correlation function. Again, we separate the photons into two energy bands, and uh, we try we we try to find um, the lag that will uh, make both peaks meet. Um, and again, um, we can derive a limit with this method. I'll explain a bit more about uh, the third method that I've been used for uh, this object. The, um, it uses a likelihood fit. So again, we separate the photons into two sets. Uh, with the low energy photons, we'll make a template of the probability density function. And then with the other set, the high energy photons, we will take each photon and we'll process it uh, individually. So we'll see if we'll see the probability that this photon uh, has been shifted by a factor, well, uh, by this lag, depending linearly of the energy. So um, what appears in this formula uh, is A, uh, the effective acceptance of the instrument, um, the, um, the spectrum, the measured spectrum, uh, G is the um, smearing function uh, of the energy, and F um, is the probability density function, well, the time distribution, and we took it, well, it should be at, um, at the source, like we, um, if we apply this method, it should be at the source, but we don't have access to the source. So one assumption is to say, okay, the low energy light curve follow the source. What, what? So this we do for each photon of the second set. Um, we make the product of all photons, and that's what we get. And the maximum of likelihood will give, well, the, um, the best injected time lag. So those are the time lags. Uh, for linear and aquatic models, and this leads to also uh, limits on quantum gravity scale um, for linear and aquatic models. Uh, those are the best limits obtained so far with AGNs. Um, another AGN that has been um, analyzed by MAGIC, uh, Markarian 501. It's located at redshift 0 0.03, and MAGIC uh, observed the flare of this object in 2005, and um, they observed uh, photons uh, ranging uh, from energy ranging from 150 GV to 10 GV, and they, they got a bit more than uh, 1,000 photons. So this is the light curve for all energies. And they applied two methods. One is um, the energy cost function, so um, it uses the fact that um, 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 well, let's say um, a narrow pulse, the, the apparent duration of the pulse um, will would increase if there would be a dispersion. So and also the power, that means the energy per unit time decreases as we go away from the source. So we just we, we have to find the right time lag to apply in order to restore the original power of the source. So maximizing this function, we can also get um, the time lag. So those are the results they obtained. They also cross-checked with a likelihood method, and those results are compatible with um, the previous one. And if we look at um, those three, uh, well, two results, three results. Uh, so here is the, um, the time lag in function of the redshift. So before uh, P 
PKS 2155, we could have thought that there would have been a linear uh, dependence on the redshift. Um, that's the um, time lag would depend linearly on the redshift. But well, since we measured PKS 2155, we have to reconsider this idea. Uh, here, a table to um, to summarize the results obtained with AGNs and to compare them with uh, results obtained with gamma ray bursts, um, in particular with Fermi, uh, which is well um, detector on okay on the satellite. Um, I wanted to point out that um, the results obtained with well AGNs are very competitive with well the best results so far obtained with Fermi, and. Uh, also, I wanted to point out um, the very recent results by Veritas. Uh, they measured the pulses of the crab, crab pulsar. And they also have been able to deduce a limit on a QG scale. And considering the crab pulsar is a very near object, uh, they got a very good result, like only um, one order uh, below what we got with the best AGNs. So this is very promising and, uh, well, with future telescopes, we'll be looking at measuring uh, pulsars to get also limits on it. So to conclude, propagation studies with photons from astrophysical sources gave us constraints on the um, quantum gravity scale. So if we take a linear model, it can disfavor some, um, some of, uh, of the quantum gravity models. Um, but so far, the quadratic um, model cannot exclude any, any model so far. Um, about the prospects, um, in a few months, um, the, um, the camera, I mean, so, so far, uh, has, has four telescopes uh, in Namibia. And um, currently, there is the construction of the fifth one with a bigger effective area. And um, so in June, we should be able like, to <laughs> To, to install the, the, the fifth camera. What, well, what those upgrades will, will give us? Uh, they will give us access to a lower energy threshold. That means we'll have a bigger delta E, a bigger energy level arm. And we might be able also to study pulsars like Veritas did. Um, and for future, CTA, that's, that is a very large ar array of Chernikov telescopes. It should allow us to follow up AGNs, um, there will be a bigger effective area, so more statistics, we could access to higher redshift, and we hope that we will, well, detect more AGNs and be able to make population studies. Thank you. Questions? Here or too late? <laughs> You show that quite a number of limits coming from different observations. Here, yes. uh, is is there sometimes the sort of fluctuations that uh, appear to you as as uh, um, you know like Lorentz violation or in? in would would it scream at you in the data if you see like a large Lorentz violation or or? Uh, what do you mean by I would scream? Well, I, I mean, is it uh, if if it's a large Lorentz violation, can you detect it uh, directly? I mean, like, can we see it from this right, table? Right. No. Well, mm. uh, it, it, these are upper bounds. Yeah, so the upper right, bounds. Yeah. But but, uh, but if uh, if you if you see a real effect, uh, like time lag, a real time lag. Right. Or, right. Um, well. Um, Well, so far, uh, um, okay. Yeah, so far we didn't uh, find, well, okay. Uh, of, course, uh, of course, you can measure uh, time lags coming from source effects. So you can find time lags. And even in GRBs in Fermi, you have a lot of time lags. So you have to find the configurations where you are not sensitive to source effects. This is one of the caveats 
<laughs> of these studies that we okay. are in facing two. We have one equation and two unknowns. But we are, uh, this just shows that we are really sensitive to some level. That okay, let's thank uh, Camille one more time.